All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can then uh, start coding our, our robotic dragster using Robot C. And we already have uh, a multi line comment here to describe our code uh, with our name, period, and a quick description about this code. So, this code is going to be used to start and stop our dragster. At least that's what we're working towards. Um, within the function task main, and these two red parentheses, we also um, have some pseudo code that describes what we want to try to do here. So uh, basically, we want to push a button and get our drag shirt's motors to turn on and for it to go. And then when it reaches the finish line, we can press another button and it will stop the motors. Um, so that's where we're headed with this. Um, before we actually drop some lines of code and you know, with robot C, we need to check a couple things. Um, and so we need to make sure that our platform type is correct. And so you can think of this as kind of like making sure the code understands what brain of, of the robot we're using. And for this class, our platform type needs to be VEX 2.0 Cortex. And you also need to make sure natural language uh, PLTW is selected. So we're going to select both those things and, and just double check that's the case platform type VEX 2.0 Cortex and natural language PLTW. If you don't do that, some of the, the functions that we're going to use here um, later on won't be available to you. So we'll just double check that. Um, the next step is that we set up our motors and sensors. So we're going to click the motor and sensor setup button. And then we're going to come over here to this motors tab. And we're going to add some motors here. And you want to make sure that you're descriptive with the names of the motors so that when you're trying to debug and test things out, you know what is supposed to be turning on and what is not supposed to be turning on. So on motor one, I'm going to do right motor. And we're going to uh, pick a motor type to run. So if you're running the smaller motors, it's a 269 motor. And if it's a bigger motor, it's a 393. Um, when we name these things, typically the first word is all lowercase, and then you capitalize the first letter of the second word, and you make sure it's a complete string, which means there's no spaces in between um, that. And then we're going to set up another motor, and we're going to use our other two-pin port of our port X, which is port 10. And we're just going to call that left motor. And we will also set that up as a 269 motor. As there's some other options here that you may have to come back to if motors are not going the direction you want them to go to. So there's a box here that you can check to reverse a motor. Uh, at this point, we're not going to worry about debugging that. We're just going to try to get these motors set up and get them turned on. And then later on, you can try to figure out how to debug them. So we'll hit OK. Um, actually, I will hit apply because we still need to set up a, a sensor, a digital sensor, a push button that will allow us to turn off and on uh, the dragster. So we're going to go over here to the VEX Cortex digital sensors 1 through 12. And we're going to pick a port that our uh, push button will be plugged into. And we'll just call this digital 1. And I'm just going to call it uh, push button. And this will be a touch sensor. And we'll also apply that. Now, some people, when they see this, they think it's maybe a digital 11, but it is actually digital 1. So we're going to apply that as well and hit OK. Uh, I'm recording a video right now. If you could step out for a second, Mullen. I don't have a mask on either. So, All right. So the next step um, for that is going to be um, to basically find the code that we need to, to match up with this, this uh, pseudo code that we have here. And so we're going to use uh, the uh, control stu structure here. Oh, and that's not it. Natural language, I'm sorry. So we're gonna go over these text functions and we're gonna open up natural language. And inside of here, there's something that is uh, labeled until. So natural language until. And because we have this as a, a touch sensor, we're going to use the code until touch. And so we're going to drag that right into here in front of our push button pseudocode. And then we're going to add that there. And so 
until something is touched, then it's going to do what we want to do. And that thing that we want to have touched, uh, we've called it push button. And so we're going to type in the code push button there. And then our, our robot's going to wait until that push button is touched. When that push button is touched, we want to start the motors. And so also in our natural language uh, X function here, we have a movement box. Uh, where we can start a motor and so we're going to start a motor here and you'll see the syntax for this is okay start a motor and then we need to define a motor port or a motor name and then the speed we want to run the motor at and so we're going to start the right motor first um, and you could start the left motor too so right motor and we're going to run it at a speed of uh, whatever speed we want. Now, you're going to have to look up and see what range of speeds are actually there. I'm going to run it at a speed of 50 uh, for now. And you can do some research and see, you know, how high could that number go? Um, and I'm also going to line, add a comment here that says this uh, starts the right motor. All right. And then I need to start the other motor. So I'm just going to drag this start motor text function here uh, again and we're going to start the left motor and that motor is going to start also at a speed of 50. All right. Um, once those motors are started the dragsters should be going hopefully although you're going to find there's a there's a there's a little trick in this code where it may not behave quite the way you want to, and you're going to try to figure out why that might be. Um, and I'll give you a hint. Um, it's that your finger might be slower uh, than the, the speed that the cortex or the robot brain processes information. So that's kind of a hint there, and we'll talk about it in the next video uh, for you. Then we're going to wait until uh, the button is touched again. So until touch, over button, push button. And then we're going to start or stop our motors. Um, so this is our push button to stop, and then we need to stop both of our motors. And I'm just going to fix this right here, this comment. So this starts the uh, left motor. And then of course we want to stop the motors and so we're going to stop both of our motors and so we're going to drag this over here and it doesn't really matter which order we stop them in so i'm just copying now the syntax right motor and pasting it in here and i'm also going to cop, copy copy uh, motor and just paste in here so i don't have to pipe it and so this stops the left motor i'm going to make this easy on myself and copy this comment and uh, this will stop the right motor. So at this point, you're, you're ready to upload the, this code to your robot to give it a try. You will attach your Cortex with a USB cable and then just download the code to the robot. And then I'll be around to help you uh, config the Cortex so it actually loads this code and you can test it. I will give you a hint again that this code may not behave uh, the way you expect it to. Um, and the reason that is, and I'll allow you to think about it a little bit, is your finger is going to be slower than how quick that cortex processes the information that a button is pressed. Um, so think about that, and we'll talk about that in our next video.